There are over 3,000 home invasions every single day in the United States, but that's nothing compared to what's coming. Let's face it, gone are the days where you can leave your home unlocked or leave your keys in your car. Not anymore. So we need to prepare and be ready for what's coming because days are getting darker. In fact, those numbers are going to double, even triple. Get prepared now. And to help you do that, here are a few tips and tricks for you to keep your home more secure. Number one, consider getting a safe room. And it doesn't have to be one of those really big, fancy, reinforced rooms that you see in the movies. No, like a linen closet or some kind of closet will work well. You can reinforce the door, make it so it's lockable, keep some food and water in there, and possibly, well, probably even a firearm as well. Not to mention communications. It can be as simple as a walkie-talkie to talk to a trustworthy neighbor to come to the rescue. And even remote monitoring, having a camera system in the house so you can see what's going on outside that room. For our family, we have key words, words that we basically put into action for our family to go to that safe room. Number two, reinforced windows. Windows are a very common entry point for a forced invasion. At least be aware of what's happening in those rooms. Maybe you could put a motion detector in there. We'll talk more about those in a few minutes. A glass break detector works well. Also put an alarm on there so if somebody opens the window, you want to make sure that you're, you know what's happening in every single room where there's windows. And you can even take it to a higher level. Consider getting 3M window safety and security film. Makes the windows practically unbreakable. But understand that's only going to slow down an invasion. It's not going to stop them from coming into the room. Another option is putting bars on the windows. This certainly could stop an invasion from coming in. It could. But it's also going to stop you from exiting the house in case there's a problem. Number three is door reinforcement. This is the number one means of entry, by the way, into a home. Chains, deadbolts, even security bars all work great. But same thing, they will slow an invasion, but they won't stop it. But be careful. It's not just the front door. Rear doors are a very common entry point as well. Because think about it. If we're talking about grid down, for example, it's not just common thieves coming in to steal your old BCR. No, they're making plans. They'll distract you at the front door while the rest of the group comes through the windows or the back door. And you see videos all the time talking about using longer, more secure screws. That's great. Security plates, excellent ideas. But again, it's only going to slow them down. Don't think that those doors are going to completely stop people from coming in. Number four, weapons are mandatory. And again, no matter how much you reinforce those doors and windows, they are going to get in. So you need to be able to protect yourself and protect people as well. But it's not simply just having a firearm. And that's where the confusion comes in. You really just having one's not going to help you. You need to practice and drill and train constantly with it. Because think about that. Even if you do go out and practice with your firearm, you're shooting a little paper target. That's great. The real thing, the paper targets, metaphorically speaking, are going to be moving around. They're going to be hiding behind counters. They're going to be shooting back. So you need to be able to learn and train tactically to be able to handle all those situations. Number five, stock up on fire extinguishers. I know that seems kind of illogical, doesn't it, for self-defense? But think about this. When burglars, thieves, etc., in grid down, people trying to get your food can't get in your house, they will set fires. This is a very common practice. They throw things like Molotov cocktails into the windows and they'll smoke you out or set the house on fire to burn you out. So fire extinguishers don't just have one or two, have lots of them, have them at every entry point to be able to put out those fires quickly. And how do you know? Well, battery powered smoke detectors work great too, so that you can be quickly get up there to put out the fires. Number six, camera systems are a possibility. Why are they not mandatory? Tell me, what kind of camera system do you have? I'm not saying don't get one. They're great. A lot, of, a lot of them, by the way, make it so you have to tie them to the internet. Of course, a lot of them are tied to the grid too for power. There's ways around that. So in other words, camera systems, great. Make sure you have the right ones because in a grid down situation, they may not work for you. One option that we have works great, solar powered cameras. And you may need some kind of alternate power to watch the cameras too, watch it on a monitor. So solar generators work for that as well. Number seven, with that, your utilities are also a target. Even if the grid is up and functioning and doing well, understand that it's a military style tactic of taking out somebody's power, cutting the power lines coming in, taking out your communications, so that way you are left alone and vulnerable. So you may want to try to find a way to conceal all your utilities going into your house. Number eight, a dog is a key ingredient, yes. And they are man's best friend. Really, that idiom means they are mankind's best friend. They really are. And at the very least, the little small yapper dogs will let you know if an intruder is coming. My favorite are the large furry beasts. They'll let you know, of course, barking, but the trained ones will attack. This is a very serious consideration for security and, of course, part of your family too. Okay, number nine, get lots of motion detectors. But not just motion detectors attached to a security system. Now, monitoring, power for the system may go down. 
You can get battery powered ones. They actually call them often driveway alarms, but we love these things. They, they're battery powered, work through radio frequency signals, so no wiring required. And you just put the sensors wherever you want to. And the chimes that you put like in your central location are super loud. We love these things. We use them for camping too, which is perfect for be able to set a perimeter around our camping area. So we pick them up from Amazon and from Harbor, Tra Harbor Freight. I'll put a link below if you want to check them out on Amazon. But these driveway alarms or motion detectors are fantastic. Number 10, solar powered security lights. No, we're not talking about those nice ambient lights for your walkways. And they are nice, aren't they? Perfect to tell intruders exactly where to go to to get to your house. Now we're talking about high powered lights and point them away from your house toward the intruders, blinding them. And same thing, we use solar powered ones. They're fantastic. That way, if the grid goes down, they'll still keep working. But as you search for these, again, I'll link some below. But if you search for your own, just make sure you get the highest lumen possible because you want to really make it have a big blinding effect. Super bright and the motion detectors will surprise those coming to your home. On that note, number 11, tactical flashlights are a must. Same thing as the solar powered motion activated lights. These are great because guess what? They're more mobile and they're tactical. The tactical part here is, has it so you can beat somebody in the head if you need to. You can get either battery powered ones, which are great. We have lots of these too, but make sure you get lots and lots and lots of extra batteries. For me personally, I prefer the rechargeable ones and I'll link some below. Super bright, but guess what? My solar generator can recharge them and that way I don't have to look for batteries in a situation there may not be any available. So there you go, 11 tips and tricks. What are some things you thought of? I'm sure there's some things I missed too. Please put it in the comments below. And as always, everybody, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.